Hi, this is Dr. Peter Osborne with Gluten Free Society. I'm on interview with Dr. Charles Parker. Dr. Parker, how are you doing today? Very well, Dr. Osborne. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, I want to kind of turn it over to you and, and let you tell us a little bit about your background and, and your practice and, and where you're coming from. Uh, so go ahead. Good. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And it's fun to talk to really anybody that wants to listen on this because it's been one of the biggest most important transformational events in my life is really understanding the relevance of gluten sensitivity, immune disorders in my psychiatric practice. I'm really a traditional psychiatrist who's been in practice for more than 40 years uh, and really have been interested for years in psychopharmacology. I've been interested in the science and the evidence associated with the science for psychopharmacology. So it's been a natural a uh, piece of my practice to really chase down the molecular and cellular physiology. I got interested in 2003 in chasing down more evidence and went up and worked with uh, Daniel Amen in uh, D.C., opened his office up there doing brain imaging, and have done brain imaging since 2003. So, But in the context of those changes and going up to D.C. And, and kind of getting out of Virginia Beach where I practice uh, every day, is I began to really think more broadly about what's actually going on with the brain and the body interaction. And what happened when I got up there is I started looking at brains and I saw uh, an interesting phenomenon occur when looking at brains and actually reviewing uh, the brain activity with the person in the chair right next to you. It was really quite interesting. And, and I began to see a pattern emerge in that uh, the people from California, Amon's crew, uh, reported very frequently brain injury, uh, hypoperfusion, where the brain looked like it had dents and holes in it and so on. And uh, really there was no history of injury at all with the patient. So it didn't make sense. If they didn't have injury, how could they have injury? And uh, we began to look more and more at what were the antecedent factors that caused the uh, oftentimes a pervasive hypoperfusion. So we began to look more at issues that were really turned out to be many of them immune issues. We looked at Lyme disease. We found a number of individuals who were exposed to mold. And uh, one of the telling characteristics that we, we saw was individuals with uh, gluten sensitivity. And so what happens with that, that whole gluten sensitivity, it was, it was funny for me because as a kid coming along in Philadelphia, now you have to understand I had classic psychoanalytic training when I started my training back in 1969. So, and my classic psychoanalytic training, the people in Philadelphia, you know, were all psychoanalysts. I mean, I, one of my mentors was the president of the American Psychoanalytic Association. So I had really a group of uh, very cool uh, mentors. And the key questions, the two key questions in Philadelphia that you wanted to ask a new patient were, what are your dreams and what are your fantasies? And, uh, you know, my life has changed so much in those 40 years. Now I, I, I tell everybody that my most, my, my favorite question, most often asked question is, is uh, not about fantasies and dreams, but how many times a day do you go number two? And, and why do I ask about number two? Because I want to know bowel function for a whole, many different reasons, for a whole lot of reasons. Uh, but one of them happens to be that the bowel is so, significant, so significantly involved with immune dysfunction. And the immune dysfunction significantly affects brain function, as you and your listeners and readers know. And then if we don't ask that question, there are several things that are going to happen with any meds that we're going to give. Uh, first of all, the meds are not going to work correctly if a person has either constipation or diarrhea because they're just not going to be metabolized in a predictable way. They're going to be metabolized in an unpredictable way. They're going to either make the person toxic or the meds aren't going to work. There are many different uh, modifications, ramifications with that whole thing. So that's just a purely metabolic point. But goodness knows we can't treat any kind of depression, anxiety, even uh, psychotic symptoms that are related to immune dysfunction with psych medications if we don't take care of the underlying immune dysfunction. Uh, so if we don't take the, get the mold out of the house, if we don't get the 
if it happens to be wheat, the wheat out of the diet. We have I have a number of stories which we'll talk as we go along about individuals who've had problems that we've we've discovered. But the bottom line is, if you don't find what the immune disorder is, if you don't take the thorn out of the lion's paw, you have a chronic infection, uh, a, con- a chronic inflammation, as it were, immune disorder that's going to affect brain function with cytokines, and those those brain functions can't be modified. And speaking from a functional medicine point of view, you you really have difficulty modifying, because I've tried this with just using things that would affect neurotransmitters like uh, neurotransmitter precursors, amino acids for, let's you know, say, using 5-HTP for a serotonin precursor when they're low on serotonin. I mean, it, things, the interventions that you do, that we do as professionals, for individuals who are compromised with immune dysfunction, just don't work. And the patients are going to be frustrated. And so finding out what's going on beneath the surface, looking instead of looking just at the tips of icebergs, we really want to go and see what's floating around, floating, floating the berg underwater. So as a result of that, I've gradually, slowly but surely, worked with the Institute of Functional Medicine, uh, went to the biotransformation meeting that they had. I guess it was about 2003, 2004 down in Florida and really started looking more and more at the whole issue of, of immune dysfunction. And now regularly, <laughs> regularly ask about it. Every time a person comes in, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out about immune dysfunction. I still am a traditional psychiatrist from, from the perspective that, yes, we really do see people get better with medications. That doesn't mean everybody needs medications to get better. It means that hey, they can work very well and very quickly if the foundation is laid properly and if we really use them very scientifically and precisely as opposed to just throwing them around, throwing them at at, at what I think are really superficial diagnostic categories like depression and ADD, which are almost meaningless uh, for an informed practitioner. I mean, they're helpful, but they're really not definitive. So 